First dibs for first time buyers is a proposed policy by the new Labour government in the UK to make it easier for first time buyers to get onto the housing ladder. Um, and there's many aspects of this and how will this actually affect us small time developers. Um, if you're interested in pursuing property development, then you might want to get a copy of my book, You a Property Developer, which I'm offering currently uh, for free. All I ask is that you contribute to the postage and packaging. So how would this work? Well, of course, the details at the moment are fairly loose, uh, but we imagine, first of all, that there's going to be a reserved period exclusively for first-time buyers. Uh, second, there would be an eligibility requirement. And third, there would be some oversight from the local authority. So the reserve period, this would be where they allow first-time buyers in a new development to be able to uh, purchase those house be houses before somebody else who is not a first time buyer is able to come along and try and purchase those houses. So this could be a matter of weeks, it could be several months in which there'd be exclusive right for first time buyers to be able to purchase those houses without having to face any competition from other people who have had uh, houses uh, before. So uh, this is most likely, I would imagine, going to be only uh, applied to new houses. Um, I don't imagine it's going to be applied to existing housing stock. Uh, so that'd be the first thing. The second thing is that they would be a requirement, and this may be put on the developer, they actually make sure that the person who is applying for to purchase that house is indeed a first time buyer. Now that could be quite tricky, so I'm not quite sure how the, you would actually go about that because you're going to have to do some sort of search. Um, there's probably going to be tied into some sort of legal requirement to, to do that. And uh, the third area, of course, is going to be local government oversight. And hopefully local government are going to actually provide a methodology in how you would actually implement that. So I kind of think that there's certain bits there that certainly need to be thought through uh, very thoroughly, uh, particularly how you establish the el eligibility, because how do you actually prove that somebody hasn't in the past had a property in their own particular name? So what about the impact it would have on developers? Well, first of all, their sales strategy is going to have to be kind of different. Um, so you're going to be targeting first time buyers initially. Um, obviously, there's going to be a process, as we've touched on before, to check their eligibility, that they are indeed first time buyers. Uh, but the marketing is going to be aimed towards first time buyers uh, before it is released to uh, second time and, and subsequent buyers. Um, the second area is the impact that uh, is on developers, which might see this actually as a negative initially uh, because they're thinking, OK, well, actually what you're doing is that you are reducing the size of the potential market that we can sell to. But actually, maybe that there is a real positive in this because uh, one of the things that is really important uh, when you are selling a property is that if people are in a chain, then the chances are that that could fall apart. And so therefore you may have a sale confirmed, but that may fall apart. Whereas with first time buyers, they have no other property to sell. So actually may speed up the process and uh, bearing in mind, it will also, depending on the length of time that they have to decide before more competition comes into it, uh, that may actually make them commit much quicker to the process. So it almost creates a, a scarcity of you only have a limited time in order to put in your request to purchase this house. Otherwise, it's going to be opened up to the whole market and you may lose that opportunity. So it actually could be really quite a positive thing. Um, again, the proof will be in the pudding as we see it actually come into fruition. How quickly this is going to happen, of course, there's no indication at this stage, uh, but obviously the government is at the moment seems to be moving at a very fast pace. But bear in mind that while they announce all these policies, they still have to go through the parliamentary procedure, which can be time consuming. So uh, don't expect things to happen as quickly as they are making out at the moment. So what are the challenges and considerations? Well, first of all, we've touched on the eligibility. How do you actually prove uh, that somebody is indeed a first time buyer? So I see that as a challenge. 
The next would be market dynamics. There could be a concern of how this will affect the larger housing community. Uh, but as I said, I think that this actually could be a positive, but of course we will only have to wait through time to see how this actually transitions out. And then we've got compliance in enforcement. So we're talking about, yes, we need to be able to establish that these are indeed first time buyers, but how is that actually going to be enforced? Uh, does that mean actually a much larger administrative burden on local authorities to ensure that so that you can see another department um, and the expansion of local government, uh, which again is going to require funding. So uh, there are certainly some questions around uh, this whole proposal. It certainly would be seen by first time buyers as a very positive move, uh, but actually how it is implemented and transitions and whether indeed it's actually workable will be interesting to watch. Clearly, there's going to have to be a promotion campaign in order to pe make people aware of this. This will probably be done through social media and other media channels to make people aware. So how might this be implemented? Well, there's potentially a two prong attack. Uh, first of all, would be a public awareness campaign, probably using social media and other media channels to make people aware of this new policy and the benefit uh, to uh, first time buyers. Um, and the second, they may involve financial institutions. In fact, what you may find uh, because of some other things that they've talked about in terms of housing, making it easier for uh, people to get onto the housing ladder by uh, providing specialist deposits uh, for first time buyers, uh, lower deposits, which are then backed by uh, the government. Um, so they may involve the financial institutions. And I think what you will likely see is that the financial institutions coming out with some sort of product that is aimed at first-time buyers linked to the government-backed uh, deposit scheme. Um, now, of course, the interesting thing is that uh, one of the things that they're trying to solve is to uh, make housing more affordable. Uh, what this will actually do is it will, uh, again, push up house prices because what you're doing is you are allowing people to get onto the housing ladder for a smaller amount of money. That will increase the amount of demand and therefore uh, that eventually, as we know, uh, pushes up house prices. So it sounds a, a really good policy on the face of it, but there will be unintended consequences as they are with so many things. And so uh, it will be interesting when we look back over a five year period, how this has actually affected the housing market, because I kind of think that there'll be certainly some negatives in this policy. Uh, from developers point of view, um, I think there'll be again some benefits. I think there will be also some drawbacks, uh, but as a small developer, I think it doesn't really inhibit us an awful lot. I think the impact is going to be on uh, larger developers who may have to reserve that stock for a longer period of time, which will be fine if there's enough demand for it. So in an area where there's demand, um, but also they have, will have to think about in terms of the types of houses that they are building, uh, because if they build houses that are far too big for first time buyers, and they have to be reserved for first time buyers, then clearly that's going to be a problem because they're not going to be able to make them, which mean uh, to be able to purchase them. That means that they're gonna have that housing stock sitting there uh, for whatever period of time is required for exclusive rights uh, for first time buyers. So interesting to watch and see how this uh, rolls out. Um, if you, um, are new to the channel, uh, then please subscribe. Currently only about 15% of the people who actually watch this channel subscribe. Uh, we should have a much higher figure. We're aiming for 50%, so please contribute to that. I'd like to see a lot of people um, involved in this channel. Uh, there are over 200 videos now on the channel. There's plenty of content there for you to subscribe to. Um, until the next time, take care, and I look forward to speaking to you then. Bye-bye.